Football is a game of numbers, and the best way defenses have figured out how to distribute their numbers is through the use of gaps. Gaps are the spaces between offensive linemen, and they're ordered alphabetically going outwards. Fill all of the gaps, and you fill any space the running back could run, and have an extra man available to make the tackle. Defenses usually put three or four defensive linemen down to fill the gaps. Their positioning or techniques are communicated through a numerical system going outward, where even numbers place the defender head up and odd numbers place them shaded towards a gap. In four down or even fronts, these defenders are all given one gap that they're responsible for. This usually means that there's a one technique to take away an opponent's A gap and a three technique to take away the other B gap. This leaves the linebackers to fill in the rest. Since four down fronts are inherently asymmetrical, it means that you have two ways to align to an offense's strength. You can either play under, which has the lineman shifted away from the strength, in this case this 3 tech is away from the tight end, or they can play over, where the linemen are shifted towards the strength. Functionally, this does two things. The 3 tech with the end usually creates a wall that makes it more difficult to run to that side of the field, but it also changes the linebacker's responsibilities. One of the main problems with any front is that it leaves bubbles, or areas where there are no defensive linemen directly covering a gap. In the case of an even front, it's this A gap and the opposite B gap. Spread offenses in particular have made a living attacking this B gap bubble. Because this sand linebacker has a conflict between his coverage responsibilities and his responsibilities in the run game. You can see here he's slow to get back into the run game and it's an easy first down for Maryland. This run pass conflict is what drives the RPO game. Here this Sam backer has the B gap run responsibility and is responsible for the first receiver inside out of this bunch formation. You can see the quarterback's eyes immediately go to him. If he were to drop back and cover the slant, the quarterback would give the ball to the running back who has blockers for every defender in front of him. But since he steps up into his run responsibility, it leaves the slant wide open behind him. This has forced defenses to adapt, where instead of a 4-3 with four down linemen and three linebackers, most teams are playing more of a 4-2-5, where that Sam backer is more of a hybrid safety body who needs speed to play both the run and the pass effectively. The other common defensive category are the odd fronts. In odd fronts, the defense typically aligns in a 3-4, and the D lineman, especially this nose tackle, typically aligns head up. This allows for them to two gap, where they're responsible for two gaps at once. This lets dominant nose guards clog up the middle and means that the linebacker behind them is responsible for making sure that they're always right. The odd front's biggest advantage comes with its flexibility. An extra linebacker gives the defense more speed on the field and a wider array of places to bring in disguised pressures from. However, these traditional two gapping three fours are falling out of favor as it's difficult to find defensive linemen you can trust to win that battle consistently. But odd fronts aren't dead and are actually having a little resurgence in the form of tight front defenses. Tight fronts are three down fronts where the four technique ends cheat inside the tackles to what's called a four inside or four eye technique. Then the defenders one gap much like they would in a four two five. Oftentimes you'll even see one middle or Mike linebacker insert into the A gap, filling all of the major interior gaps and effectively clogging the middle of the field. But probably the biggest reason the tight front is catching on is that it eliminates the B-gap bubble that spread offenses have taken advantage of for so long. Now this outside linebacker's run gap has moved from the B-gap to the C-gap, which makes that conflict, frankly, less conflicting. While the tight front seems to be the new big thing, football itself is always changing and adapting. Even the tight front is just a modification of the old bear front, but that's the beauty of the game. It's a living, breathing game of strategy where old becomes new and new evokes creative ways of playing the game.